we are in Moscow. We are in the studio of uh, TV Rain, which is a Russian television channel, unique and extraordinary, and I think it's the best television channel at the moment in Russia. And I want to introduce to you Mikhail Zigar, editor-in-chief, and I want to introduce you Tihon Zatko, uh, a host of this program, and the deputy editor-in-chief. And they will be both guests of this year Perugia uh, Journalism Festival, and we would be able to talk to them. But before they come, uh, I would like them to present their channel a little bit to make you familiar with what they do and what are the problems and how they cope and how they try to uh, keep their channel uh, working. Uh, Mihail, my first question is to you. Uh, everybody. Uh, we live in changing times and we live in the internet era, but uh, it seems that uh, television is still enormously popular in Russia. It's a powerful media and uh, public opinion research, researchers claim that it's the most important uh, uh, source for the information for the average Russian citizen. Uh, how would you explain this? Why television is still so powerful in Russia? Now that's that's a very interesting question. Uh, probably we know that that people are um, people live with their myths, and um, they probably do not believe in what they hear on TV, but they still uh, perceive uh, television as the only window to the world that they have, and um, from the there were all Soviet times. Uh, in Russia, we have a proverb, or such a phrase that uh, we heard it on TV, and it means that that's, that's a solemn truth. If something was, was claimed uh, by anyone on TV, that means that that is true. Television is also used as a tool for propaganda uh, by government or Kremlin or you know, um, the role of, uh, of, tele of uh, television in Russian domestic uh, policy is, is huge. We know that uh, that's very important for Kremlin to, uh, to hold uh, television under its control. And um, that's the result of the 20 years of, uh, of Putin's policy. We, uh, we had no independent TV channel in Russia for, for many years. And uh, what is said by, by the main anchors of the main political talk shows uh, on state TV channels is the official point of view of Kremlin. State television, as for now, is um, is unique uh, voice of Kremlin, and uh, it's possible to to overestimate its significance. Um, and that's why. What's happening with our TV channel is uh, a symbolic thing that um, we, as the only independent news TV channel in Russia, became a victim or or target for uh, not only for state propaganda but uh, the whole state machine, and we are uh, now trying to endure and and survive this attack. But uh, we understand th that. Uh, we are uh, disrupting the state monopoly on the information, and uh, that's why we mm, we considered by the main power powers in Kremlin uh, as an enemy. Mihail, when I watched uh, TV Rain for the first time four years ago, somebody told me that there is this new channel and it looked different. The the formula, initial formula of TV Rain, was different. Now it's sort of uh, uh, real TV news channel with uh, with great team of reporters and great team of hosts and anchors. It was a little bit different in the beginning. So I would like you to tell us a little bit how this about this development process, how it how it how it worked with you that you have emerged with this amazing formula, which is resonating with the viewers so much. I don't see the difference. I think that's that, that's my point of view that we are doing that we used to do uh, in the beginning. Uh, first, we try to, to understand who is our viewer, 
And we understood that most of Russian uh, audience is fed up with uh, state-run propaganda TV channels. And we need to find uh, something new. We need to start something new, otherwise people just stop watching TV. We're trying to find what people are looking for. What people were looking for. And uh, we understood they, that they, they need alternative source of information. They, they need some news. They need some, uh, some truthful news. They need uh, opinions. They need uh, newsmakers. They need uh, um, experts and expertise. And they need somebody to believe. They need real truthful news. And that was we were planning to do from the very beginning, just to give an alternative to that type of television that, uh, um, that exhausted uh, the whole Russian audience. Um, so, but suddenly we, we, we realized that, uh, as Vasla Havel once said, in the world where uh, the lie is ruling, the truth becomes an opposition. And uh, only trying to give an alternative and to make truthful news, we are becoming a real opposition and we are called oppositional TV channel. Although we are not oppositional TV channel, we, we are not giving floor to uh, only to members of oppositional parties. No, no, we, we just, we have them both. Uh, representatives of the government or, um, or even Kremlin administration and uh, uh, well-established opposition and some, some uh, representatives of those oppositional movements which are called non-system or underground opposition, we are giving floor to everyone. And that is very unusual in Russia. It would be interesting to hear from you. Uh, how would you compare what you tell your viewers and what is being told by official television channels? Let's say I'd like you to tell people who will watch our video. Uh, let's say we have uh, this was this was a period of time very rich in events. So what is, was the difference of your news service with the news service of of, of the major official television channels? Well, I think uh, the main difference between. Um TV Dost and uh, state television is that uh, here on TV Dost we show everything. Like uh, during the protest in uh, Ukraine or during this crisis uh, between Russia and Ukraine, uh, we saw on the state TV channels uh, that uh, we saw just Russian position. And uh, the fact is that uh, TV Dost uh, doesn't have uh, the position. TV Dost uh, uh, all, all we want to do and uh, all we do uh, oh, and all we are doing, we are t telling the facts. We uh, show to the translations from, uh, from the uh, anti-governmental uh, rallies. Uh, we showed, we, we uh, gave the possibility to, uh, to give the interview uh, to the people who was, uh, support Viktor Yanukovych and who are support Vitaly Klitschko or other uh, opposition uh, leaders and uh, members. And the main uh, reason we were interesting, and I think uh, the main reason uh, we were uh, more interesting than uh, state TV channels during this, uh, for example, during this uh, crisis in uh, Ukraine, is that you, as our viewer, uh, you uh, turn on the TV Dost, you see different uh, opinions, you see uh, different positions, and you see the picture, and then you make your own conclusion. We are not trying to, uh, to, uh, to make your conclusion. We are trying to give you all the information we have, and uh, all the information which uh, exists, and then you will decide. Uh, you will decide you are for Yanukovych or you are for uh, Klitschko, for example. So we're not trying to, to uh, teach you. We're not trying to explain you. We're trying to give you information and we give you the information. You're not afraid to interview on your channel uh, opposition activists who would never be invited to, uh, 
to studios of the main of official channels, uh, and I have my interviews with a number of uh, of, of uh, opposition figures. Uh, when you invite them to, to the studio, do you feel that it might be that it might be uh, disappointing for the for, for the authorities, for the government, or that it may lead to some troubles? Like when you talk to Alexei Navalny, for example. The only thing I am afraid of, uh, I am af uh, I am um, afraid of breaking the law. But inviting uh, people with a different opinion than uh, opinion of the Kremlin, it's not illegal. It is how the journalism exists. If you are a journalist, you gave the right to uh, to speak to all the uh, all the uh, all the points of view. That's just how it works. And if it works another way, it's not a journalism. It is some kind of uh, propaganda. So uh, I think the main thing you have to decide, which I decided and Mikhail decided, you decide you are a journalist or you are not a journalist. And if you decide you are a journalist, you are not afraid of uh, inviting uh, opposition uh, members. Could you tell us a little bit more what is available to the audience in Russia in terms of uh, websites or newspapers? How big is the world of this independent media in Russia? And what, what, what are the problems at the moment? I think the main problem of the, of the independent media in, uh, in Russia today is um, is uh, that the independent media, they um, have a, a very small uh, coverage. So uh, there are just a few newspapers, there are a few uh, internet sites, there, uh, there is one uh, radio station, and there is one independent uh, TV channel. So uh, I, I know... And one magazine. And one magazine. Two newspapers, one radio station, one magazine, and one TV channel. Some websites? Some, Some websites. websites. So um, I am absolutely sure that uh, people in Russia, uh, like people all over the world, uh, people in Russia want to have uh, the real information. They want to receive uh, the news. But, um, but the majority of uh, Russians, they don't have the access uh, for this, uh, these uh, real news. For example, uh, TV Dost never had the possibility to be uh, to cover all the all uh, all all the regions of, of our country, all the cities of our countries, uh, our country. Uh, these uh, newspapers and uh, this magazine and uh, this radio station also they have a very small coverage. Uh, so, f if you if you live in uh, in um, in a small town, uh, the only media media you have access to is some state TV channels and some state uh, newspapers. So um, th that's just one of the problems of the independent media. The second problem is uh, political pressure. Uh, so that's why many journalists uh, decide to. Uh, um, not to write uh, the truth because uh, they are afraid of uh, some uh, of some uh, things uh, which can happen to them. And the third problem is uh, economical problem. People uh, are afraid to give uh, the advertising for the independent media. Uh, people are afraid to uh, give the money for independent media. And that's why independent media don't have a lot of money f for existence. So I think that's three main main uh, problems with uh, independent media in Russia today. Mihai, this is no secret that TV Brain is confronted by very serious problem at the moment. When you come to Perugia in the end of April, we'll know more if the channel is going to survive or uh, if it has more problems. Uh, Tell us, please, more about the situation. What happened uh, uh, recently, and how are you coping? There is a very long history, and um, I'll, I'll tell you just a few, few main facts. There was a pretext for the attack. Uh, that was a program that happened uh, at the, um, the end 29, of uh, January. 20 yeah. or 26th of January. We had a historical program. Uh, and the main topic of that program was 
uh, Siege of Leningrad, um, 65th anniversary of uh, the end of the, the blockade. And th there was a question asked by the presenters to the audience. Was it necessary uh, to give in Leningrad to Nazis um, for the sake of survival of the thousands of inhabitants of the city? Um, that question infuriated many of our viewers. And uh, just in about 10 minutes after the question was asked and published in our Twitter, uh, we withdrew it and apologized uh, before all, all the viewers who felt insulted. Uh, but that question was used as a pretext for the attack on our TV channel, and we were blamed um, for being fascists, uh, uh, unpatriotic, and paid by, um, by some unknown forces, um, uh, traitors and so on and so on. By the way, uh, a couple of days after that, we found out that the same question was uh, in the history textbook for ninth grade of average Russian school, and the textbook was recommended by the Ministry of Education. So no one was insulted uh, by the history textbook for ordinary school. But after that pretext, um, uh, most of our partners, cable operators and satellite operators, started uh, switching us off. And uh, for only one week, we lost 90% of our audience. All of them admitted and confessed that uh, they did it because they got direct phone calls from Kremlin and they were demanded to switch us off because that was the decision made in Kremlin. So that's why we know that no one really was insulted by that question. There was uh, a campaign organized by Kremlin, and the real aim of this campaign is to destroy our TV channel, uh, uh, leaving it without the audience, without commercial par partners, without advertising, and without money. Uh, by now, we, we're trying to survive, we're trying to endure, and we still have some millions of viewers uh, via our website, uh, via um, many cable networks, we still have uh, something like 250 networks. And we were trying to find s new ways of getting our signal to the viewers, and we're still popular. We're, we're still. Uh, uh, working not only in Russia, but uh, also in Ukraine, Georgia, Latvia, uh, as well as Germany and the United States, in, ma in many countries. But in those countries, you're available with satellite. And, satellite, and, yeah. But in Russia, this is mainly available via internet, right? Uh, internet and cable networks as well. We still have 250 networks, but, but uh, that's only 10% of what we had before. We were nationwide TV channel. No, we're not. And the most important thing is what Tikhon uh, mentioned. All of our uh, commercial partners that uh, wanted to have uh, the uh, advertising on our TV channel, they left. We have no advertisers, no more so far, as for the end of March. And that's the plan to destroy our TV channel because we are private TV channel. We have no uh, support from government or from state-related oligarch or from any rich investor. We have only one ally and that's our audience that still supports us and that pays for, for the sub subscription and we are trying to survive with the help of our viewers. That's our only plan as for now. Would you say this attempt to uh got some financing from the viewers. Has it been successful? Would you say it's successful? And I would like you to tell us a little bit more who are, who, what is your audience? Who is your, who are your viewers mostly? We don't know uh, whether it's successful or not. Uh, we've just started. We just uh, asked our viewers uh, to support us. 
uh, and uh, so far we have a uh, huge uh, moral and financial support for, for from them they're paying for the sub subscription we don't know whether it's uh, it would be enough uh, for us to live for a year or half year at least. It's an expensive media, it's not yeah. like... Uh, uh... But, but we, we, we have good examples in other countries. We have good, for example, in the United States, uh, PBS uh, gains uh, its fi financing uh, from, from the audience. Uh, and we're planning uh, um, a big event, fundraising event, uh, it will be already successfully over, I hope, by the time when our conference in, in Perugia is going to start. Uh, it's planned for the end of March. And we are going to, um, to, to fundraise uh, some amount of money to survive independently for at least half of a year. Um, I cannot make any forecasts. We, that's our only hope. And do you try any negotiations with people in the Kremlin, or do you try to tell them that people want TV Rain to uh, come back, or, or uh, do you try to open some communication channels with people who are responsible in this country? You know, we can uh, we can tell only for ourselves. We we are not to um, to give comments um, from our owner, and I don't know. Uh, as far as I know, no one offered any kind of negotiations to us. Uh, no one has confessed that uh, that was Kremlin's initiative to destroy TV channel. They say that that's business as usual. That was an initiative of cable operators and advertisers, and there is no politically motivated attack. So um, we had no negotiations, and we are not, frankly speaking, we are not interested in that kind of negotiations because if we are, um, if they present us with the possibility to continue our work, that means that we owe to them, and that means that we are we cannot be longer independent because we need to look for their um, will and their agreement for, for, for our continuous work. And that's not what our audience want from us. Our audience already has uh, pretty many TV channels loyal and obedient to Kremlin administration. They don't want us to be the other one. Political situation in Russia at the moment is very complicated. We are speaking on the day when uh, President Putin signed a decree about uh, incorporation of Crimea. It's now part of the Russian Federation. Are you pessimistic in a way that this political situation may influence the future of the channel in a negative way? Or, or you sort of, you're young, so uh, it's natural to be optimistic about future. How do you see the, this, this, this nearest future for TV reign in Russia? I am um, very optimistic, but I, I don't want to make any forecasts. Uh, as we know, the history of uh, Russia has uh, many uh, examples uh, about how it changes in, uh, in uh, one minute. So, of course, I do hope that uh, we'll see all the best soon here in Russia, here in Russia with the media, here in Russia with um, human rights, uh, rights, etc., etc. But um, the <clears throat> but the way which was uh, pronounced today by Mr. Vladimir Putin, uh, this is uh, the way not to the country with um, with uh, human rights and uh, civil rights and uh, liberty of the press etc etc so i think um, the politic of uh, russian government uh, which we see today uh, it is uh, this politic is not good for uh, tv channel dost as it's not good for all the uh, all the people in Russia who uh, want to live in um, 
in a country with um, independent media and uh, with um, the democracy. It will be very interesting to listen to you and to have an opportunity to ask you even more questions. Thank you for your questions thank you. and thank you for coming. I hope that you like our studio. You're not the first time here, but uh, you see us in progress. And uh, probably last time we were much more optimistic. Hopefully in the Perugia we're going to be as optimistic as usual. Hope so. See you. Thank you. Thank you.